it's Christmas Eve. Quick message. Um, primarily thanking all of you folks who have sent me Christmas cards. I just woke up. Can you see that? I do like to um, make the videos shortly after I wake up. Something about morning energy. And help, it helps me to get my day going. Sometimes. But I want to just say um, happy holidays. Um, there's, you know, several holidays have been put in this part of the year so they line up. So whatever it is for you, Festivus, Yule, Christmas, Kwanzaa, which is happening soon. Merry, merry, merry to you. I would like to thank you. Everyone who sent me stuff and Christmas cards. Um, I don't send out cards, so um, thank you. I got quite a few this year. I'm thinking probably because people know that my, my brother passed away. And um, and um, that that seems like a, a, a reasonable reason to think, well, why are people sending me all these cards? It's been years since I sent some of these people cards, and they sent they sent me a card. So I appreciate the sentiment, and it is helpful because as um, as good as I'm doing, I am missing my brother. Yes, I am, still. And along with along those lines, my plans for Christmas, because I usually spent the day with him, is that um, I'm going to have his his best friend Pat Bullock who sometimes comments here Omaha Pat you'll see his um, comments I'm gonna have him over tomorrow for a visit and um, some kind of a um, meal or snack I haven't really decided yet but um, the other thing I would like to say here is I'm hoping that you folks will be safe and careful with the uh, the the um, COVID mess that we're in, when I turn on the news and and it's international, it's just a mess uh, with Omicron and Delta variants and all that stuff. So I know that it's human nature to to cling to things that we want to believe as opposed to facts. And so I know that there are a lot of people who are operating in that mindset. It's Christmas, I gotta do this, I wanna do that, I wanna see my friends, you know. Well, I hope it doesn't kill you, okay? How's that, all right? Because I am I, I am a little impatient with um, people's fantasy um, um, way of thinking. problem to me so I am also thinking that um, depending on how I feel tomorrow um, that I'll do a, uh, another live video tomorrow after my visit with Pat or maybe I'll include him we'll see okay but um, it stands to reason that a lot of people people will be around tomorrow uh, for a, a live video so tentatively I'm like looking at doing that okay okay otherwise um, I'll show a record some records and then, then maybe share some more thoughts because um, yeah I did I did a blind poll for myself yesterday here at the house I need to do that sometimes because there's some records that when I see them I won't I won't pull them and this is one for example I have several Carla Blay albums she came to my attention primarily through her composing for her ex-husband Paul Blay but um, I appreciate Carla and I have to be in the mood that picture of the band in their swimsuits is gross but um, because there's a somberness to me I get from a lot of her writing. Um, somber is the word, kind of pensive. 
thinking, thoughtful music, but not always in a bright way, almost kind of like in a muted colors, gray days sort of feel. There's good playing on here. And uh, Andrew Cyril and Elton Dean, Hugh Hopper. I mean, what a band, you know what I mean? That alone, to listen to the interplay of the, in the musicians is worth it. Recently, I, I bought this album, Kos, Kos, however you say it, Kosmix, Kosmix, Belgian band whose albums are hard to find, and um, I've never been able to find them cheaply. Now that I have this, I'm glad because, frankly, I do not like the vocals on this. The vocals on this bother me. And they treat the vocals like it's a feature of the band. Uh, and this woman, what she does, I find rather annoying. I, actually, I do not like it. So it takes away from the compositions. So I guess in a way I'm glad that I haven't found any of their records because they're always expensive. Here is, I believe these guys are Dutch. Progressive Rock 8, Pictures from Cyclist 7. You don't hear about this band much. I'm not sure they're Dutch. I'd have to look. But I listened to this all the way through last night. It's been a long time. I've had this for, for decades. And what struck me is that this is, um, they sound a lot like sticks. Um, this could have been very popular. Sticks is one of the worst bands I've seen live. They're good at what they do, but I've seen a lot of shows, but that stands out. Sticks were having a horrible cocaine night when I saw them. They were terrible, even worse than the night that I saw Aerosmith, who were whacked out on cocaine the night that I saw them. Steven Tyler was a mess the night that I saw him. Okay, so if Richard, if you happen to see this video, I want to share with you that I... Um, had a listening experience with some more of your music recently. I, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I listened to this. Theme, Sacral Blood Warning. And I got into the grinding sound of it. The, the sound table that the words are stacked upon, I like. I'm not interested in this wordplay. <clears throat> And I can hear that that's part of the appeal that some people who are getting into this get into this wordplay. I don't, it does nothing for me. Same with this. Gad Whip, post-internet blues. Musically, this is very interesting. Vocally, it reminds me of John Cooper Clark, the poet. But basically, I'm really not interested in wordplay. So um, I was able to get into them for a while, and then I, I took them off because it's like, you know, if they'd have just shut up, I'd have been cool. That's my honest assessment. Um, I was doing something and discovered this, un, this unsealed cassette that I got from Brian Day, and I was embarrassed. I said, ooh, I haven't even listened to this to review it. This is by Cal Spelitic. The Blessing of the... Okay. Zeng Ziji. Okay. Brian Day and his label, Public Eyesore and F, are out on a limb. They release a lot of work that is just very challenging to the listener. And this is a challenge. This is sound work, but it, there's no samples, there are no electronics, it's all these machines and um, gadgets that this fellow put together. Kind of like my friend Brian Day. Brian Day is an instrument maker, uh, has a bit of a repute for it. This is good. I enjoyed this. I was able to listen to quite a bit of it. Along the same lines, if you happen to see this, guys, um, I took another listen to this. Anakio, um Entity Upload Entry. And I enjoyed this for the most part. Then there got to a point where it's like, okay, what I'm now listening to is someone playing with their technology. It's almost like some things sound like you're you know, scrolling through 
sounds and things. And that can be kind of interesting when you don't know what it is. But overall, that's still pretty good. And this one, too. Patrick Kilpatrick. Um, Kilpatrick? Yeah. One or two. Sample-based. I like, I like electronics. I do. I like sound. This is pretty good. This one um, is pretty successful all the way through. Okay, people. Y'all take care now. I'll talk to you in a minute.